Today's torture method are mask of shame. Like this mask here, which would be used against you if you were an eavesdropper. Yes, in the medieval times, even doing something so simple as eavesdropping on someone um, could put you in a mask of shame and, you know, torture you. So people that were put into these masks of shame were often chained um, to a wall and then, you know, publicly shamed with the mask on. Like, here's an example of what they used to do to people. This is someone who was charged with gluttony, so they were wearing a pig's mask. The eavesdropper mask is a rabbit's mask. There's all sorts of animals and funky creatures to represent different crimes for these masks of shame. Doing things like lying, gossiping, or just talking back to a man if you're a woman could put you into these masks. And they definitely do not look comfortable. There's actually a lot of these masks that are displayed throughout torture museums in Europe. All these artifacts and the information that I've gotten comes from this museum here in Italy. The craziest torture devices ever, part 37. The copper boot. Is it just me or does that sound like an Irish pub? Also referred to as the hot oil boot. As usual, used in Europe during medieval times, they would use the boot in three different ways. Filling it with boiling water, filling it with different molten metals, or just beating the shit out of it with a hammer. But you want to know the worst part? It probably wasn't even your shoe size. Fuck that. You're officially on the creepy side of TikTok. Today we're going to be talking about medieval torture devices. As you can see, the torture device has literally spikes coming out of it, and it was usually used as an endurance test. The victim would be unable to put their head down or even rest, and this would usually go on for a couple of days. The next torture method was the brazen bull, which is also known as the silicon bull. The victim would be placed inside the bull, and there would be a fire underneath the bull. The victim would slowly be roasted to death while screaming. The bull was purposely designed to amplify these screams, so it would sound like a bellowing of a bull. The next torture device is known as the Herectix Fork. It consisted of a metal piece, two opposed forks, which are attached to a strap. One end is pushed under the chin, and this was usually used when people were being hung from the ceilings. Like, not hung as in dead, but you know. So it would prevent them from putting their head down, because if they did, they would... But how long can you keep your head up? Want to hear about more medieval torture devices? Like for part two. The craziest torture methods ever, part 16. The shower bath. Used in the American prison system starting in 1845. Notably used in New York Sing Sing prison. Use of this was abolished in the late 1880s. You would first have your arms and legs pinioned in, similar to the medieval pillory. You would then have a dish tightly fitted around your throat. As the water falls, if you didn't keep your head well erect, you would suffocate. They used this as a form of torture and to try to extract a confession. A prisoner named Samuel Moore actually died from this. For almost an hour, he endured a shower bath in freezing cold temperatures. Fuck that. White room torture is a form of emotional and psychological torture. Unlike other physically painful forms of torture, this mentally traumatizes the victim for the rest of their life. Here's how it works. The victim is placed into a room that is completely white. They are dressed in white, meals are white rice on white paper plates, and they are forbidden to speak. Sensory deprivation soon makes a person hallucinate, and then eventually drives them insane. Amir Fakhravar was in the white room for eight months. He said, I couldn't remember my mother and my father's face. When they released me from that prison, I wasn't a normal person. The craziest torture devices ever, part 35. The intestinal crank, used throughout Europe during the Middle Ages. This was typically used to gather information from criminals. You could also call this an execution method. You were tied to a table with an incision made on your abdomen. The small intestine was then separated from the bottom of the stomach using a hook which was attached to a crank. The crank was then slowly turned, pulling the intestine out from the gut inch by inch. Witnesses would see anywhere from nine to 18 feet of intestine gather around the shaft of the crank. Did I mention you were conscious during most of the process? Fuck that. So today's torture method is coming straight from the Roman Empire. So meet Tiberius. He was the second emperor of Rome, and um, he was a terrible person, just in general. Some of the awful things he did, he was terrible. But today we're going to be talking about uh, just one of those terrible things. So good old Tiberius here would invite his enemies over to his house, and, you know, force him to drink wine. He'd be like, hey, let's have a party here. Go drink some nice wine. So, yes, all of his enemies would be drinking and drinking for hours. Um, and once they got their fill, uh, Tiberius, uh, by the way, all of his victims are male, would uh, tie their genitals shut. So if you know male anatomy, you would know that tying their one main genital shut uh, would inhibit their urination. So, yeah, they would uh, sit there at full bladders and he would just torture them which is one of the worst feelings ever. God, I would hate this. Some died of infection of not being able to empty their bladders. Sick. 
The craziest torture devices ever, part 15. The Spanish Donkey. It may sound sexy, but oh, it is far from it. Introduced in the Middle Ages, but was used all the way up until the Civil War. You would be straddled on the wedge butt-ass naked, and then weights would be tied to your legs. There are many instances of the victims being split in half. Typically designed for women, there was some instances of it being used on men. Fuck that. The craziest torture methods ever, part 10. The Tiger Bench. Used only in China and introduced in the early 90s. You would first be tied to a bench with a board behind your head and back. Then one by one they would place bricks underneath of your feet. Until the pressure broke your ankles and knees. They still use this today. Fuck that. Torture device part 4. This is called the breast ripper and honestly the name kind of speaks for itself. If a woman was thought to be a witch or was accused of adultery or self-abortion, this might have been used on her. The craziest torture devices ever, part 12. Here's another classic one most people have heard of, the iron chair. Popular in middle age Europe, this device was a staple in torture dungeons. They used this one more for psychological torture than anything. They would purposely have somebody being tortured in the chair when you came into the dungeon to incite fear in you. Every design of this chair though had at least 500 to 1500 razor sharp spikes. Some of the worst ones though had a hole in the seat where they would light a fire underneath of your ass. Fuck that. So today's torture method is the hair shirt. So basically, you can kind of guess where it's put, so there's like a neck hole, so there's hair in the front and hair in the back. So you may ask yourself, so what's so awful about this shirt? Well, it's made of hair that's supposed to irritate your skin. Now also, because the Spanish, being creative, also decided to put twigs in there and stones. So it irritate your skin and cut your skin more. So this method was used on heretics during the Spanish Inquisition, but it was more commonly used in the New World. The climate in the New World is a lot warmer up than the climate in Europe. So it would even make it more uncomfortable because now you're wearing this warm jacket that's irritating your skin. You know, that's pretty, pretty annoying. Sometimes they made people sit with the shirt on in the sun in public for hours. Sometimes they made them sit with the shirt on for days. Plus, if that wasn't enough torture for you, when they had the shirt on, they were denied food and drink. I'm waiting to see some fashion model wear one. The craziest torture devices ever, part 26. Crocodile shears. This one's for the boys. Only used on someone who tried to assassinate the king. A simple set of pincers with a long narrow tube. Lining the tube was razor sharp spikes. Usually heated up red hot before use. Sometimes used on fingers, but mainly used on your glizzy. Fuck that. Medieval torture device number 25. This device is called the tongue terror. It was mainly used on witches, heretics, or liars and cheaters. The victim's mouth would be forced open and this device would be used to tear out their tongue. In some cases, the victim would be starved for many days at a time and then their tongue would be torn off and then they would be given a very hot, salty soup to eat. So of course they would be starving and they would want to eat that soup and that would be extremely painful. Finally, the victim might be brutally beaten. The craziest torture devices ever, part 13. Ah yes, the brutal saw torture. Popular in middle age Europe, but used worldwide. The method showed behind me is actually the classic style of saw torture. It would string you upside down by your ankles so the blood flow would go right to your brain, keeping you alive until they hit your midsection. The ancient Chinese had their own way of doing it. They went from the head down. Fuck that. Medieval torture device, part 20. These are called the punishing shoes. The victim would typically be strapped on to something with their head and arms and see how long they can stand on their tippy toes. When they fall back, the spikes would be jammed into their heels. The craziest torture devices ever, part 21. The head crusher. Used for torture and execution during the Spanish Inquisition. The victim's head would be placed inside the metal cap with their chin resting on the lower bar. Then the crushing began. It would sometimes leave the victims under extreme pressure for hours, even days. A common sight with this device was eyeballs popping out of the head. Fuck that. Craziest torture devices ever, part 17. The knee splitter. One of the most common and used torture devices ever during the Spanish Inquisition. Fitted to the front and back of your knee, it would be slowly tightened down until it completely destroyed your kneecap. Not typically fatal, they basically used this as like a, a nice little warm up. Fitted with six razor sharp spikes or all the way up to 20 spikes. This was also fitted on arms, elbows, lower legs, anything it could crush, it would. Fuck that. Have you ever heard like to wait till marriage, you know, maybe your parents told you not to copulate before marriage? Well, the Aztec really took that seriously, and they even invented an entire torture method for it, known as kind of like pine needle torture, I guess. The Aztec really valued like only mating once you got married to someone, and it was like an important value to their society. So if someone was found in bed, 
you know, with someone else before their marriage date, they, yeah, they would meet the fate of pine needles. So what did that mean? Basically, uh, someone, usually their guardian, would take pine needles and basically try to stick them in every inch of their body. Picture like a needle from a Christmas tree. Now picture that being, you know, shoved into every inch of your body. Some parents were extra harsh and decided to beat their child after, you know, putting pins inside them. Porcupine time.